that's probably not going to be as obvious on that one. Brandon, you got a guess on that one? How about if we just made the negative, flip the thing over? Then it's going to do something like this. Right. But then it's going to be too low. So we need to add something to it. So if we did... On that, now a t equal to zero, even zero we said is what? One. One. One minus one is zero. It's that boundary condition. Okay, at t equal to infinity, what was e to the e minus infinity? Zero. That was zero, so we end up with one, but what do we want to end up with? We end up with 10. So the equation on that scale factor is 10, so it's going to be 10 volts, mm -hmm. one minus e to the minus t over rc. Mm -hmm. And that, that 10 volts, that's just given. Uh, it's because whatever the battery, actually it's whatever this battery is, is um, uh, the value, because that would be the value at an infinite time. Just like this is going to be the battery divided by the resistance V over R. Minus T over RC. Nathan, what are the units on that exponent? Divide by something like, let's go the other way. Or to the power of 2 ohms. What's that going to evaluate to? Doesn't make sense, does it? It's a constant. Your exponent can't have dimensions. This has to be an integer, it has to be a real value. So, there, this has to be dimensionless. You can't have ohms, you can't have amps. It's got to be dimensionless. It just has to be a number. So. Given that, Josh, what are the units of the numerator? Seconds. It's going to be seconds. Therefore, what are the units of the denominator have to be? Second. It has to be seconds also. So if you were to multiply r times c, you're going to come up with units of seconds on that. It's going to be time. And if you were to do the definition of what an r is, uh, volts divided by amps, and what the units of all this is, do a dimensional analysis, you'll find that r times c does give you units of time. So this rc, It's going to be called the time constant of the circuit. This units of time is constant because we've got uh, physical components that aren't changing values. And quite often the time constant is shown with the Greek letter tau. constant of this circuit, or how would I compute it? Would you take the 1k okay. and multiply that to the... Uh... Which is 
is going to be the one micro period. What's yeah. micro? Ten to what? To the negative six. Some people last class said 10 to the minus 3. 10 to the minus 3 is milli. Uh, so micro is this. So what's that evaluate to? 10 to the negative 3. Which is milli. One, 1 millisecond. So our time constant on this circuit is 1 millisecond. So that means it takes one millisecond for the voltage to, on the capacitor, equal zero, or 10 volts? Uh, no. Okay. In a couple minutes, though, we'll figure out how this is going to work on it. But the time constant does dictate how fast or how slow all this stuff is going to be happening. Okay. <clears throat> Given all of that, now I'm going to put some numbers in and calculate uh, voltages and currents on this. So the current is going to be 10 milliamps, e to the minus 1 millisecond, divided by r times c. And we said that's also 1 millisecond. Milliseconds cancel, so I get e to the minus one. And the calculator display isn't working reliably, so um, this is going to be ending up to be three point six eight milliamps. Something that's usually confusing in the book and the first time we're going through it. Um, the author is going to ask to evaluate this at time equal to one time constant. Well, t at one millisecond is equal to one times the tau time constant. And when we plugged all that in, this was e to the minus t over rc. So if your time is equal to one tau, time constants cancel and you have to e to the minus one. So that, that's usually a real confusion factor on the problems in this section. Okay, next what I want to do is get the voltage at that same time. And it's going to be same exponent e to the minus 1. And I'm going to crank through that. Six point three two. So after one time constant, I'm at 6.32 volts. The final is going to be 10. So I'm 63% of the weight of the final value. And on this, uh, decrease to uh, 36.8 of the original value. Next, let's do it for two milliseconds. Which is two time constants. So plugging that in. T two tau divided by the denominator time constant tau plus I have just e to the minus two. <coughs> One 
1.35 milliamps. And my voltage. Six point five percent of the way. Rather than doing all of these, let's jump to T equal to five milliseconds, five time constants. Derek Jensen, how long is this going to take until I reach the 10 volts in the zero? That. We're going to keep getting closer and closer and closer. But we don't reach that. But we're sort of impatient. We can't wait forever. Uh, so we got to figure out what's close enough. And industry standard is if you've waited five time constants, you've waited long enough. So five time constants uh, is a rule of thumb for being fully charged. And we note that rather than being at uh, 10 volts, we're at 9.93. We're 99.3% of the way there. And anything beyond that, you know, you've lost it in the accuracy of your components anyway. So rule of thumb is five time constants. Uh, just say, oh, faster is going to be at 10 volts. Current's going to be zero. Next time, we're going to be having a quiz over mesh and mobile analysis, and then we're also going to be taking a look at coming up with equations when we're doing the discharge part in addition to the charging part.